I don't know if I want them this big. Yeah, I do. So here, here. All right, so that's cute. The candy cane would be next. We're gonna get, I know black plum is the color she uses for the um, the red stripes, and then I think it's something like um, chocolate, milk chocolate. And all you do for this is the, um, the inside, so the this edge on this side to the right and the inside of the top is where we're going to shade. That's it. So for the red stripes, you're going to use um, black plum. And I'm just side loading again, blending the color into my brush. Get that graduation of color. Turn my piece to make sure I, oh, I don't, don't touch your dip dots, guys. I do that all the time. All the bristles on the surface not just the paint, all of them. You need the water too. Oops, I went into the white. It's okay because that's going to get shaded in a minute. I'm just going right back to my palette and picking up a little more um, color. I can't, you know, the angle that I'm painting, I can't really see. The way my lighting is, it's just so bright. But look at that. Look at how it gives it It'll almost look round. <clears throat> I've painted a lot more detailed candy canes and stuff. And it's cool. Like, you really make them look round. Um, but this is just a cutesy, very nice little candy cane design. So look, there's that. And then we're going to get the milk chocolate and do the white stripes. I think we're going to add some snow. We're going to call this done very soon. That's why I wanted to do this one. This is a great beginner piece to show you guys. I got through it pretty quickly. I'm going to do that side load one more time. I'm going to let you guys see. I'll make sure I'm in the shot here. Hold on. So, um, water. Let me get this in here. Blot. So you're taking the majority of the water out of the brush, but there is still water in the brush. Milk chocolate on the corner tip. Put it down on the palette, walk away a little bit, and then come back in, pushing it into the bristles. Flip it, and see if you get that graduation of color. Whatever's happening here is going to happen here. So if you don't like what's happening here, don't go here until you get it right. Um, I'm looking a little wet because you can see the bubbles. So I could blot, but I like having that water. And then go right back in and I just, I think that's good. We're going to go over here. And I'm going to go on the same side we just did the um, black plum. Just put that milk chocolate down the side of the uh, candy cane. The white stripe. All the bristles on the surface. And I'm just picking up more color. I don't know why. Um, and I'm going to go... Where did I go with this? Um, yeah, just down this whole side. Okay, I'm going to go up against the, his hand, too. There you go. We're going to put a shine line, and let's see if she uses, yeah, she does use white. I knew she used white for something in this stinking thing. Because I think I made my the snowflake on this one white, but the other one I used the buttermilk. So we're going to get a little bit of white out, and we're going to make a shine line down this down the left side of the candy cane 
for like a highlight, you know? So I'm gonna go into the water and then make a wet puddle. Add water to that paint because I want it to move. You don't want it to be sheer, so not too much water, but I want it to be like ink. That's all I can say, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I'm just gonna take my brush and start towards the left side of the candy cane. If you need to trace it, trace it. But you're just gonna swing it. Hi, Curb. Swing around, and there you go. Hi, girl. It brings it right to life, doesn't it? Um, we gotta add some snowflakes and the bow. Now, she has you doing the bow with <coughs> um, I don't even know. Where's the bow? Oh, candy cane. <coughs> How's her dark green? I did that, like I said, on the first one. And I ended up covering it up with stickles. And I liked it. But I think I'm even going to do another one of these. I'm not going to paint it on. I'm just going to um, tie one on again and glue it. But you're welcome to. And again, you would just trace that on and paint it on. That It's just simple. There's no shading or highlighting on that. Um, <coughs> all right, so let's put our snowflakes <clears throat> background shade around the gingerbread with dot the sky with titanium white for falling snowflakes. Now she doesn't even she doesn't have these traced on, but she does have them in her color picture, and that's what I used as my reference. So um, I kind of just made them. They're different on both of them. I have some big, some little, and they're just random. Oh, you know what else we need? Little teeny tiny dots. I'm going to make them white, too, on these um, berries. Little teeny tiny. Can you see? Tiny, teeny, tiny. <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not well. All right. I'm going to use my stylus, my, I think the medium one, because I like the way that the dots graduate. Like they, they start out bigger and they get smaller. I'm going to get some fresh white paint out as well. And I'll show you, because that way, this is how you make a, a nice dip dot. You need a nice fresh puddle of paint, a nice ball tool like this. And you literally just go dip, dot, dot, dot. And see, they all three of those graduated in size. And that's what I do. I just start randomly putting dots down. So you can do it however you want. You can spatter the piece. That's another technique that people like, spattering. A lot of the um, mixed media artists do that. I have a spatter tool, actually. Is it here? Yeah, I'll show you it in a minute. Um, but um, I like this. I think these looked really cute for the style of the piece. And you don't want too many. Don't get crazy. One right there, one right there. I think we're good. That looks like plenty to me. Just a little snow falling. I mean, it will be falling on her if you want it to. Um, so that is good. We're going to sign it. I'm going to try and go much smaller this time. I've been signing so big. I'm going to use black plum. It's just out here. I'm using it. But I want to try and... Oops, and I went right into the white. Duh. I want to try and make it smaller. It's hard. But I just go... S, but you really want this wet to move like ink. A, R, A. <clears throat> and it is 2015, guys. And I love putting the date so you can come back and, and see how you've improved over the years. So that's good. I mean, I don't want it to be... That's good. I like it. It's like a little faded, so I'm leaving that. What else? I think I've already added the paper to the back. 
this is a paper mache piece. Which went to pull off the um, the stickers on the back. It left, you know, rough edges and stuff, and I just didn't feel like painting it, so I'm trying to add in my paper crafting to um, my painting as well. So that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to add like stickles and little embellishments, three dimensional embellishments. Um, it, maybe instead of painting this, you could put a button, you know, a snowflake button or a wooden uh, a wood piece. There's just, you know, let your imaginations go. But I really liked how this ribbon turned out, so I wanted to do another one with ribbon. So that's what I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to let these um, dip dots dry. I will varnish with this. This is the Delta Ceramco brand of matte interior varnish, they call it. Um, there's lots of brands of varnish. I like to use um, a matte or, or a satin varnish. Although on my Christmas pieces, I've said in the past, I do like to use maybe the sparkle varnish to make it really sparkly or a gloss varnish. Um, you could put snow tech up on top of here to, you know, to embellish it more. You know, there's a million things you could do. You can use your glossy accents all over the candy cane. Actually, I might do that this time. I think I might do that. I think I'm going to put glossy accents on the candy cane to make it look shiny. Maybe I won't put the, um, like a Stella on the, um, gingerbread, but that looks so pretty, doesn't it? I love that. So yeah, I think, I think I'm just going to play. Um, but I was saying, I did just put, um, paper on the backs of these because they're paper mache and it looked rough. So I just laid it down and traced it, cut it out, and glued it just with my glue. And I haven't, did I varnish this one? One of them I did, where I think I even used Mod Podge to put it on. Like I've played with Mod Podge, just glue, um, or then I've just put varnish too. So um, these finish up real nice, these little paper mache. They're really cute. There's not a lot of prep. You don't have a lot of sanding. So I hope you like this tutorial. Um, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. All right, and I think that's going to be it for my painting tutorials for a while, um, unless something else comes up. But I'm gonna I want to play with my clay. Uh, all right, thanks for watching.